morning. morning. It's good to have you both in-house and online. We're glad you're watching us online, and we hope that you enjoy our worship service today. Loving and caring God, we come to you this morning in hope. Hope that will sustain us in trying times, in lonely times, in times that we are doubting. Refresh us this morning with living water, the living water of your presence and love. Open us to the possibilities of friendship, the possibilities of encountering you in unexpected ways, and the possibility of seeing the miraculous in everyday life. In Christ's name, amen. First hymn this morning is page 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Please stand as you are able and join in page 127. Thank you. look in your bulletin you have an insert and it is the litany of humility if you will uh, join me in this I will read the the regular print and you will read the bold oh Jesus meek and humble of heart hear me from the desire of being esteemed deliver me Jesus from the desire of being extolled deliver me Jesus from the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. 
from the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being illuminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspect, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase, I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. The others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in every preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be holier than I, provided I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. You may be seated. Now comes a time in our worship service where we share our joys and concerns. Lord, we praise you. We sing your praises and we realize the, the wonder of the works that you do in our lives. We thank you for living water and bread from heaven. We thank you for, for quenching our thirst and filling our bellies. But not only that, for giving us living water spiritually and the bread of heaven to know that that we are fed and nourished only by you. Lord, we sing your praises. We, we give you glory and honor with our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to be the disciples that you call us to be. Give us humility, Lord. Put ourselves last and others and you first. Lord, help us to, to be humble. Lord, we pray for all of those we've lifted up in prayer this morning for the joys and the concerns. We pray for healing and wholeness. We pray for peace. We pray for, for just uh, help with those who are lonely and alone. We pray for the little animals in our midst that are, that are suffering and need care and the people in our congregation that are that are struggling with health issues both mentally and physically and spiritually and relationally. Lord, we pray that, that you will bring your healing, that you would pour out your living waters that gush up and cleanse us and, and give us life. Because, Lord, you are a God of abundant life. And, Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you work in our lives even when we're not paying attention. Now let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our ushers come forward for God's tithes and our offerings. Gracious God, you are our provider. Open our hearts and fill them with your love and your hope. Lord, help us to see in our neighborhood the places where our church ministry can reach people 
who need their raptured souls to be saved. Lord, help us to reach out in our neighborhood and get to know those who are suffering, those who are lonely, and those who need the living water that Jesus offers. In Christ's name, amen. reading this morning from the gospel according to John. Now when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. He had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. <coughs> there came a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, 
you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. This you said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem it's the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is for the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joel. Let's, read, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we pray that you would send a word into our hearts this morning. Help us to get rid of all the things that get in the way of listening, of listening and hearing what you have to say to us in this Lenten season. In Christ's name, amen. Are you thirsty? Have you ever been powerfully thirsty? I recently remember that I was taking a prescription vitamin D and I'd been taking it for several years and, and it, was, it was a great amount of vitamin D and the doctor had prescribed it for me. And it had been a while since the doctor had checked my vitamin D levels and I just kept being thirsty and thirsty and thirsty and I couldn't get enough to drink. Alan calls me a heavy drinker anyway. When we go out to a restaurant, he tells the, the waitress, just go ahead and give her the whole pitcher. She's going to drink it all. So, so I was just thirsty and thirsty. And he goes, I don't understand how, can you, how you can be thirsty as much water as you drink. But I just couldn't quench that thirst. But I didn't know the source of where that thirst was coming from. And here this woman is. She is coming to the well, and Jesus is sitting there at the well. And she's sitting there, at, Jesus is sitting there at the well, and she comes up and he talks to her. He talks to her. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but I love water. Water of any kind. I love the I love being near the, the rivers, I love being near the creeks, the waterfalls. Any time I can get near water, I love it. It's just a passion. But there's something about water that's just refreshing and soothing. At the ocean, any kind of waterfall, any kind of creek. I love going up to the Smokies and, and being in the creeks coming down the mountains. They're just so beautiful. And nothing speaks about God more than those places. 
God's ever-flowing streams of water. And it just brings me close to God just knowing that. And Jesus is not talking literally about the water at Jacob's well, but he's talking about something deeper than that well. In our scriptures today, as Joel read, the Pharisees are thirsting for power. Jesus is doing much better, and the disciples are doing much better than even John the Baptist baptizing. Their numbers are up. And even in the biblical days, they counted numbers, didn't they? <laughs> I hate counting numbers. It's like we're more than a number. We're much more than a number. It's important to have numbers, but we're much more than that. So Jesus is at risk, so he travels from Judea back to Galilee, and he goes through Samaria. He goes to the city of Sychar. And that's where Jacob's well was, if you remember from the Old Testament. And Jesus had been traveling. He was weary and probably thirsty. And the disciples are off looking for food. They're probably hungry too. So Jesus is left by the well, and it's, it's at noon. A strange time to be drawing water. But here's this woman. She comes to the well with her jar to draw water. Now, Jesus had nothing, not a cup, not a, not a bucket, not a wineskin or anything to put his water in. He was sitting there, and he commands this woman to give him some water. He doesn't ask her. He commands her, give me a drink. He says. And we know that Jesus was thirsty and she was thirsty, but Jesus' thirst was deeper than her thirst in a way because Jesus' thirst was the thirst to fulfill the will of God. And he did so. Her thirst, she didn't even realize that she was thirsty. She didn't even know that her thirst was deeper than, than the jug of water, the jar of water that she brought to the well. Give me a drink. Now she's smart. She knows that this is a Jewish man. But she literally be begins to question him. She thinks of what he's saying is very literal, but... She's saying, how is it that you, a Jew, can ask me for a drink, a woman of Samaria? Because she knows that Jews and Samarians are hostile toward each other. And the conversation between a Jewish, between Jesus, a Jewish rabbi, and a woman was scandalous in and of itself. Because rabbis weren't supposed to speak in public to any woman. She's a female and a member of the enemy people. Jesus is breaching all kinds of boundaries here. So Jesus responds to her, her first question with, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. There's a lot of irony in John's gospel, and the irony is here that Jesus is speaking about himself, isn't he? She doesn't get it. Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks that drank from it? She's focused on Jesus' need, and she's wondering who this man is and what he's all about. We're often like that woman. We're often thinking so literally that we don't get it. You know, Nicodemus did that last week in our sermon last week. He was thinking so literally he couldn't get it. We forget that Jesus is speaking more spiritually than literally to us. 
Jesus' answer to her is, everyone who drinks of water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. She still doesn't get it. You know, that's the way we are. We don't get it. Jesus gets us, but we don't get Jesus. She says, sir, give me that water so I don't have to keep coming and drawing water from this whale. Jesus is trying to take her to a deeper level, but she's literally stuck in the literal meaning of what he's saying. He's telling her he's the gift from God standing right in front of her and she can't see it. How many times is Jesus standing right in front of us and we don't get it? Mark Twain tells the story of in one of his books about a slave who went to sleep one night on a narrow neck of land in Missouri that jutted out into the Mississippi River. That night, there was a great storm, and the river cut a new channel right through the neck of the land. When the slave woke up the next morning, he found himself not in Missouri, but in Illinois. He was a free man. The rushing water had freed him, And such is the case of the woman at the well. She was freed by the living water that Jesus offered her. We are freed by that same living water today. We've heard the story of the woman at the well, and we've heard it so many times. We we get so familiar with these stories that we don't see the truth in them oftentimes. And we tend to think about this woman as an adulterous woman. She may have been. She had five husbands. And the one that she was with at the moment was not her husband, so yeah, she may have been adulterous. She may have been very unfortunate and had lost five husbands. Nothing nothing in the scripture talks about divorce. She may have lost, she may have been the Levitical law where she loses a husband and goes down the the track to the next brother and and then she gets to the last brother and he doesn't even want to marry her so she's, she's left high and dry. Who knows? We don't know. And even... All we know is Jesus knows her. He knows what she's done. He knows all about her. He knows her thirst. He knows her needs. And he opens up a can of worms. When Jesus knows us well, he opens up the skeletons in our closets and lets those out. We can't hide from God. I was telling Matt this morning that I'm a minister because I know what kind of skeletons were in my closet. (laughs) And I know what God has done for me. But when Jesus opens that can of worms... We, we begin to see ourselves like the vitamin D to fish, a, a vitamin D overdose that I had. I didn't know what was causing it. I didn't know anything. I just know that I was extremely thirsty and I couldn't get enough to drink. This is this woman. She doesn't even realize her, where her thirst is coming from. She doesn't even realize she's thirsty. We're like that. We don't even realize that we're thirsty at times. We don't realize our needs. We don't realize until Jesus speaks to our hearts how deeply we need Jesus. 
Perhaps she needed Jesus because she had no relationships that were steady. Perhaps she needed Jesus because she was rejected by everyone around her. Perhaps she needed Jesus because she was ashamed. Perhaps she needed Jesus because she felt like her life had gone too far and there was no no path of return. What is it that we need Jesus for? What is it in our hearts that needs the living water to cleanse our hearts and make us whole? Now, she starts out thinking that Jesus is this Jewish man, odd Jewish man that's breaking all the rules, social rules, and talking to her. What's he doing talking to me? I I don't know why he's talking to me. And then she slowly begins to see who he is. She sees that he is the Messiah. She sees that he has good news for her life. She sees that he's much more than just an ordinary rabbi. She sees that he has something special to offer. And that he doesn't just give it to to these people in these categories over here and these people in these categories over here and these people in these categories over here. Jesus is always going out and reaching to the, out to the ones that we would never even want to touch. Never want to talk to. Those people with, le- with leprosy. Those people who are in horrible poverty. Those people who are very different to, from us. Those people who are our enemies. Jesus is reaching out to those those people and offering them living water. So she goes out, she's transformed. She finally understands what Jesus is offering her. She leaves her water jar behind what she came for to start with. She has received the living water that Jesus is talking about. And she runs back to her village, to her city, and shares the good news of what Jesus has done for her. She says, he knows everything about me. Everything about me. Jesus knows everything about us, even the skeletons in our closet. Praise God. <laughs> but Jesus knows those things and that he loves us anyway. And he reaches out to us when we're in trouble. When we need that living water the most. But when she goes out and shares the good news and, and good news isn't good news if it's not shared. Have you ever had some good news and, and it's all you can do to keep from sharing it? You want to share good news, don't you? But then we sit here Sunday after Sunday and I do a survey about the church and I ask people if they've shared the, 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 the gospel with anybody. Oh, <laughs> it must not be good news, folks, <laughs> if you're not sharing it. It must not be good news if you're not sharing it. The majority said no. They haven't invited anybody to church. They haven't shared the good news. Now, I'm not fussing at you. I don't share it often. Sometimes when I'm on a plane, I never tell anybody who I am. Because I almost have to preach a sermon every time I'm on the plane. I disguise that purposely so I don't have to, so I can have some peace on the plane. And that's horrible, but that's what I do. (laughs) 
But good news is good news only if we share it. You know, like the Samaritan woman, we're all human, we're all thirsting for the living water that Jesus has to offer. Come to the waters, all who are thirsty. Come and see Jesus. Jesus, the gift of God. The one who offers living water. And go and share that good news with everyone that you can think of to share it with. And it doesn't take a rocket science scientist or a theologian to share the good news of what God has done in our lives. It's actually pretty simple. You know, I watched a movie, I don't know, it's been a while, but, the, but this guy was saying, remember ten things you are grateful for each day. Just sharing what you're grateful for that God has done in your lives is sharing the good news, isn't it? Being thankful, being grateful for the living water that Jesus offers to us every single day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Our hymn of sending forth is 732, Come We That Love the Lord, 732. Please stand. this benediction. Lord, help us to encounter your word. Fill us with living water and help us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the food we're about to eat and we celebrate Cindy Rosin. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless our food and bless Cindy as she retires from, from her position as pianist. Lord, we pray that you would help us to find someone new. And Lord, we just pray that you would just bless the food to our bodies and most of all, nourish our souls in Christ's name. Amen.